to the tailback, bouncing up inside with a nice cut. Here comes Trayvon McMillan, down the near sideline, it's a foot race. Number 34 at the 25, the 15, the 10, the 5, and sound! Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! 75 yards! A 75-yard touchdown by Trayvon McMillan, a highlight for the Colorado Buffaloes in a 45-14 victory in their home opener here at Folsom Field. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the Buffalo Stampede. Coach Gary Barnett, voice of the boss Mark Johnson. Colorado 3-0 and after three games of non-conference play. Well, you can't do any better than that. We know that, right? <laughs> can't do better, and we've seen it all. I mean, we've seen – we had an unbelievable game a week ago in uh, Nebraska, and then today we had a team that we should beat, and we beat them mm -hmm. and, uh, in, a, in a hot day and, and a day in which New Hampshire was trying to slow that game down. Yeah. They were snapping the ball with one second left on the clock, and so uh, it, it, it's a hard game to coach, Mark. It really is, and uh, not so hard to play, but it's a hard game to coach, and it's a hard game to keep your intensity up. And I think that's why one of the good things you do is you play a lot of kids in this game because those kids are getting a chance to play. They've got intensity. And then those guys that didn't get to play for a while, when they go back in, they've got the intensity. So that's the way you deal with a game like this. And, and overall, you know, I think uh, for the most part, uh, the Buffs feel pretty good about where they are. Buffaloes did rush for 311 yards in this bowling game. Kind of got the sense that was a point of emphasis coming in. Trayvon McMillan, we just saw the highlight there. 15 carries, 162 yards, couple of touchdowns. He's been over 100 yards now twice in three games for the Buffaloes. The more you see him, the more you like him. Huh? Yeah, I've been slow to sing his accolades. I really have because I wanted to see more of him, and I wanted to see him in situations uh, that were, were more dire. And, and I, I'm telling you, I was really impressed with him today. I was impressed with... Uh, with him outrunning the, the two New Hampshire players down the sideline after breaking, and, and they had an angle on him, but he was able to outrun them. And so uh, the shotgun formation that he, uh, the, excuse me, the wildcat formation that he ran the uh, touchdown on, I, I was impressed with him on that run as well. So he's impressed me more and more each week. What do you come away now? The Buffs are 3-0. What, what's your takeaway after three non-conference games? Well, one, we're a lot better on defense than we were a year ago, yeah. especially up front. We're making plays up front. You know, linebackers aren't stuck and safety, safeties aren't stuck having to make plays. We got guys up front making plays. That makes a big difference. Secondly, you know, we're a little better at running the football. Uh, we don't have Phil Lindsay, but uh, uh, I think that our quarterback's playing I think Steven's playing better than he did a year ago, yes. much better. Steve. And and the receivers are, he's got a great core of Yeah, without question. Steven did have an interception, what he'd like back. But boy, through three games, he's been playing at an efficient level. It was the home opener for the Buffaloes. As you imagined, outside the stadium before the ball game, very festive. Oh, there you go. We're here uh, partnering with our friends from Chevron to bring a STEM zone concept to our kids, bringing science to life for kids, showing them how student athletes train on combine drills, showing them reaction drills, and we also have turf science. So it's a great day for us. What we're doing here is bringing, building a pregame family culture and inviting families to come out with their kids, enjoy the great Colorado sunshine we're having, and to experience everything it means to be a buff on a game day. The whole buff experience is a little bit of an interactive experience where they can kind of test some skills athletically, but but also talk a little bit about the science behind, you know, each one of the activities for like vertical jump and gravity and, and shuttle run and some of the changing direction and velocity. So it's kind of a real simple, subtle way to talk about science behind the sport. It's really about creating more awareness for STEM fields and showing kids and parents that there's science, technology, engineering and math more or less behind everything that, that goes on, including athletics. So we developed it to give kids a little bit of a dose of that and almost surprise them with the fact that there's STEM behind all the sports. Well, a lot of fun outside the city before the home opener for the Colorado Buffaloes. 3-0 after their 45-14 win over New Hampshire. By the way, Coach and I are in trouble here. We have to do a retraction. We made a comment during the, the radio broadcast that Peggy and Betty, the twins, which are national treasures, by the way, had left because it was so hot. They made sure we found out they did not leave, and shame on you for saying they did. <laughs> well, they, there was a cutout of, of one of the twins there, and, uh, you know, I thought it w I would be funny, but in my smart mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. humor sometimes right. I make a mistake. And right. so I said it was so hot out here that even Betty and Peggy left. They left a cutout to make sure people thought they were still there. Yeah. They didn't leave. Right. I got harassed after the game. <laughs> they never leave a game early. I apologize, Peggy and Betty. We'll not make that mistake again. Yeah, They are the best fans in the history of sports, not just here in Colorado, everywhere. They never leave, and they didn't leave in this one. And I'll never accuse them of <laughs> And do not ever accuse them of that again. Hey, one thing, uh, I know with the UCLA game coming, 
coming up. It's a mental health awareness game, and that's one thing that you're with Bus for Life and is a huge point of emphasis for Bus for Life. Well, it really is, and we're sharing this time with the University of Colorado. Um, we have uh, our 5013 c and our former players have banded together to create a mental health movement um, and awareness that is second to none in this country. Yeah. Uh, we're inventing the wheel. We're creating our own place with Bus for Life. We have so many people that have uh, jumped on and uh, been tremendously supportive. Fox Sports is going to do a segment on this. We're inventing the wheel, and, and so we're going to maybe take the wrong turn here or there, but we're doing something nobody else is doing. It's, it's, uh, we're sharing in this mental health day with Colorado. Yeah, yeah, that's outstanding. In fact, we've lost a couple of Buffaloes, and that's far too many, and so they're doing some great work. Lastly here, week off before Pac-12 play gets underway with UCLA coming to town. Mike's going to have kind of a mini training camp. That's the approach you're taking to week play. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think the, the the idea of it's very good. Uh, I think he's got to find a quarterback that can back up Montez. Yeah. Because uh, coming out of this game, I'm not sure that it's Sam, but yeah. uh, we hope it is. Yeah, Stephen was very sharp. Sam came in and struggled a little bit. Buffs do have the bye week. Then it's UCLA on September 28th. That wraps up segment number one on the Buffalo Stampede. Coming up next, former Buffs quarterback and Fox Sports commentator Joel Klatt's going to join us. Being back now as an alum, it's, it's kind of funny feeling, especially being here after five years. It's kind of weird being on the other side, but it's a great feeling. I feel welcome. So going back on my time here, you know, my first year and a half was definitely, definitely an adjustment. Everything was a culture shock, but you know what? I didn't shy away from it. I embraced it. I'm a better man now because of it. And it's now preparing me for life in the future uh, because, you know, life is going to throw things at you that you may not be used to. And because of I had this experience already, you know, being able to stand on the field with you know, Carl and Spencer, you know, these three of us are playing high level. The University of Colorado and the basketball program has prepared us for where we are today and it's allowed us to succeed in our game today. So I'm really and thankful and grateful for the university. Proud. And uh, go Bucks. That was great to see the alums out for that ball game on Saturdays. The Buffaloes improved to 3-0 in non-conference play. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, back in the stampede. Another alum, Joel Klatt, former quarterback. What are you doing now, by the way? You know, <laughs> he's working I, for Fox I, Sports. Yeah, I Come gab on. for a living. I don't know if it's any good or not, but yeah, I, I, I shout about football. Yeah, he's been doing quite well. In fact, he's on campus doing a feature which is going to air on Fox before the UCLA game. Bus for Life has got a great, um, shall we say, a little mission yeah. to deal with mental health with, with athletes. You're here to do a feature on Well, that. yeah, and, and listen, this is a subject near and dear to my heart, as it is a lot of the guys that I played with uh, and a lot of the guys that I didn't play with that, that are alums. We had to do something, you mm -hmm. know, candidly, Mark, right? right? right. Th this, is, uh, this is a subject that has affected us as buffs. It's affected a lot of programs around the country, but we had to start developing connection points and, and getting back in touch with one another um, and, and supporting one another like we did when we played. Yeah. And, and that really, you know, was, is, a, is a generalization of, of how this thing kind of started. And I got to give so much credit to Coach Barnett, Sean Tufts, Brian Cabral. They, they have done an amazing job shifting the focus of what John Embry created Buffs for Life for and just shifting it a little bit towards something now that can be so narrowly focused and, and something that can really achieve positive uh, things and impact a lot of former Buffs as they kind of move through their life. Mental health, always something that's near and dear to me. I've said before here on the show, I lost my father to suicide. Yeah. It's something that we as men, and maybe in particular as athletes, because we've got to be tough, right? We don't want to talk about it. Right. So we don't want to share it with anybody. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and I was talking with a couple of the clinical psychologists here uh, that are on campus for the student athletes. And um, Chris brought up uh, an amazing point. He said, you know, when you're an athlete, from the time you start being an athlete, you are trained to train. Mm -hmm. and look at your faults and, and look at the areas where you can improve and, um, and then all of a sudden attack those areas. And you're never taught how to do that with your mental health. No, you're never right. taught yeah. as a kid how to look inward. And uh, so it's just a, a, a change. You know, you have to change the, the minds and the mindset of these current student athletes. And I think that's happening. Well, that's a great mission for Buffs for Life. And here at the University of Colorado, and keep an eye open again for that feature that uh, Joel's doing. It'll be before the UCLA game on Fox Television. You know, one other thing the Buffs are doing off the field, off the playing surface, is a great event this past weekend. Shining the spotlight on ovarian cancer, the Hike for Her event. Many of you know that this hike was put together three years ago because I lost my mother to ovarian cancer. And 
even in her spirit, I continue to want to fight against this cancer. We're here today because ovarian cancer has no screening test. A lot of women think, oh, I get my regular pap smear, I'm fine. Well, that's for cervical cancer, and thank God we have it. But sadly, we have no screen for ovarian cancer, so the only thing we have is education. And that's why I'm so grateful to the McIntyres for doing what they can to spread awareness and education about the symptoms of ovarian cancer. It's so deadly because we never catch it early. See your doctor, just make sure that everything's okay. Be your best advocate. We're here to support ovarian cancer research and all of these women that have fought the battle. These are television glasses, and when we do these events, we do them in television, and that's to support my daughter, Chantal. We called her Telly. She had ovarian cancer. She got it when she was 29. In her last days in hospice, she had an NG tube in her nose, and she took these glasses and put them on because it helped block the view of her NG tube and just made her feel a little bit better. Since then, everybody's been doing everything in television. The hike for her is such a great, bolder expression of raising awareness for ovarian cancer and everybody's out here in the most gorgeous spot, gonna move their bodies and spread awareness. So good stuff for the Buffaloes off the playing service. Good stuff on the playing service. Colorado 3-0. and Got a feeling, feeling good about our bust right now. I've been huh? very excited, Mark. Yeah. I got to tell you. And, and that's only for us, you know? That's like right. I, I can't be too excited outward. A lot of people hit me up on social media, and they're like, hey, man, why aren't you more excited? I'm like, I am excited for the bust. Sometimes <laughs> I got a job to do, though. Yeah, sometimes I have to wear that on the inside. Uh, I've been so proud of the way that the, the young men have played. Um, I remember winning at Nebraska in 04, That's and right. that was the most memorable post-game locker room that I've ever been a part of. So to know that these kids now got to enjoy that in Lincoln is, is a great feeling. And I got to tell you, you know, I get to put together Heisman uh, lists and everything. Coach McIntyre is not going to like this. LaVisca Chenault is Legit. making an impact around the country. People know yeah. about LaVisca Chenault, man. This dude He's a monster. He's so good. Yeah, I love watching him play. That, that guy is a freak. You joined Gary and I for the spring broadcast for a yeah. few minutes. We we're talking about Steven Montez. Yeah. Have we seen growth in the quarterback? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think significantly, and I think uh, the you know bringing in Coach Roper has helped him a lot because what what I see from him is a guy that has more answers. So he he's playing with answers. There's no gray area. Vague mental approach to schematics uh, from a quarterback get you beat. You've, you've got to be back there and you've got to have answers. You've got to be black and white with the decisions that you're making. And I feel like that's more of how he's playing. Um, I've been really proud of the way he's done because he needed to admittedly improve from last year, and he's done that. Yeah, well, good stuff. Uh, now you can uh, put your objectivity back on when you leave here. Today. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, good to see you. Keep up you the good too, work. You too, bud. It's All great right. to see you. All right, that's Joel Klatt, former buff, and out with Fox Sports. Again, keep an eye open on that Fox broadcast before the UCLA game on uh, what Bus for Life is doing. Coming up next here in the Buffalo Stampede, great weekend for volleyball. The Getty Abu is going to join us. Rams just have to keep it alive. Smith with another chance. That's in. And the winner, the Buffs win it. 25 22, 3 to 1 here. Buffs over the Rams. Big victory by the Buffaloes in the Colorado Classic over Colorado State there at the CU Event Center. Hi, everybody. Back in the Stampede. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson. Negeti Abu, the MVP of the Colorado Classic. How about you coming back and taking home the hard work? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, good weekend for the Buffaloes, though, huh? Yes, I would say so for sure. Yeah, you guys are playing pretty well right now. Yeah, I'm very excited. Now, you came back from an injury. That was your first action, in fact, this mm -hmm. season. How are mm -hmm. you feeling? I feel great. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Did it take a while to, to get back? or Well, apparently not. You won the MVP, so if you go back into it, you're, you're ready to go. Uh, it was actually my first weekend. I think I'd actually gone to one practice before I started playing. Okay. Uh, but it definitely helped that I was on the sidelines every day and, like, watching and paying attention in film. So, so the mental reps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was very important for us. Coach Mahoney's not going to just let you not practice now because you played at a high <laughs> no. level. So that's right. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Buffs have won five matches, in fact, in a row here at Savoy. What is this team doing well right now? Uh, we're passing well. Uh, we're serving well. I think everyone's also doing a really good job of focusing on the scouting reports. Um, and we're executing everything pretty well. So there, there were high expectations, though, for this team coming into this year, weren't there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How do you handle that? 
you know, there's nothing you can really do except take it one game at a time. Um, so we're blessed to play in the Pac-12 where every team is so good. Um, and so you can't really plan too far ahead because <laughs> every team is so right, good. Right. Um, but, yeah, so we're just taking it one game at a time and trying to focus on each individual game. Well, it's always a good day to be a buff when you knock off the Rams. And we were there behind the scenes as Colorado and Colorado State were going at it. Tonight we play CSU, it was a good team, and we ended up beating them 25 to 22. I think it just takes effort and being responsible for your part on the court. And we all love each other and we all work hard. We all have to get up in the morning and come to workouts. We all have to put in the same blood, sweat, and tears. So we all just feel like we're family, so we just come together and we do what we have to do. And I love it when we have a big crowd because I feel like we should all support each other. But man, I'm telling you, it's just amazing. Great scenes behind the scenes, if you will, for the Colorado Buffaloes against Colorado State as the Buffs win the Colorado Classic at the CU Sports Center. Uh, always a good day when the Buffs beat the Rams, isn't it? Oh, it's I don't care great. if it's in tiddlywinks. <laughs> <laughs> Football, volleyball, basketball, it's, it's always a good day, right? Always a great day. Yeah, Buffs are playing at a high level. All right, now you talked about volleyball in the Pac-12. It's as good as any league in America. Mm -hmm. You kind of jump into the deep end of the pool. Wednesday night, Utah. They're coming up this weekend on Sunday at Southern Cal. Now it's time to get serious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they're both very good teams, so right. we're really excited. <laughs> and that's one thing about this league, isn't it? I mean, every single match, you're playing somebody mm -hmm. that's probably ranked. Yeah. As both of these teams would be. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten teams out of the Pac-12 end up going to the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the dance, once it gets here, You've been tested at that level. Oh, right? yeah. Every night, every huh? weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. It's great to see you back in the court. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Nagata Yabu, she was the MVP of the Colorado Classic, and now the Buffs get set for the Pac-12. Coming up next, here in the Stampede, Jalen Tompkins. Boy, that soccer team is playing very well as well. We'll talk to them next. Just down a little on her jersey. Uh, Marty, what's that number on your jersey? It's 21. 21. It's your birthday is it today. Is. You're 21 and you scored on your birthday. How yes. cool is that? Oh my God, it was the best feeling. I came into this game, I was like, I have to get a goal at least. And I got one and I was honestly, I was on the verge of tears, but I was so happy that I got one. Yeah, no, it was crazy. We knew we were coming into this game and uh, both teams were already going to bring the energy because it's such a rivalry game. But we were excited for it because we knew it was going to be such a battle and it was just going to be different to other games we were going to have. Um, but we knew we had to bring the fight and we knew it was going to be tough. But we brought it today, we gave it everything, and we just, we're just we so happy with the result. There are some words by the birthday girl, Marty Pukatapu, had a goal, a 2-1 win by the Buffaloes over DU as they wrap up non-conference play, 8-0-1, unblemished. Uh, Jalen Tompkins, JJ joining us, goaltender for the uh, the Buffaloes. That was kind of fun, the birthday girl getting a goal on oh, yeah. her birthday. 21st. Huh? Not bad, yeah. yeah. Matching her number, by the way. 8-0-1 for the Buffaloes to wrap up non-conference play. First time, by the way, that has ever been done by the University of Colorado Soccer Program. What does that say about this group? I think it just shows we have a lot of determination and passion and we want to win. I think that's the most important thing to us is winning and playing well as a team. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. I think it's the first time we've ever done it. So yeah, it's yeah. really exciting. That's awful impressive and uh, sets a nice standard now for the Buffaloes. They're about ready to jump into Pac-12 conference play. Uh, I mentioned the goaltender of the week in the Pac-12. Congratulations. Thank what does you. that mean to you? It means a lot. It's exciting. Um, Scott and I have been doing a lot of good work in the goal and the def yeah. defense has been doing really well. So it's exciting. You know, I think when your goalkeeper gets the recognition, it really says something about the defense because at the end of the day, I don't have, make, have to make many saves, so it's exciting. I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Is it three goals? I think you guys have given up total now. Yeah, you have three goals. Games? Yeah. Now, now, that says a lot about you mm -hmm. uh, and, and Scott as well, but also about the defense that's being played in front of you. Yeah, if they can't take a shot on goal, they can't score. So right. I think our defense has done a really great job, and we've had a lot of new people coming in and out of uh, the defense, and everybody's worked together, and I think that's a standard we've set since spring season. Mm -hmm. We want to defend as a team. All 11 players defend, and all 11 players attack. So bringing it into season, we can see the results and see how well it's working for us. The way this team has been playing, you know, you'd think, well, you're 8-0-1, only giving up three goals so far. Where, does you, where do you need to get better once Pac-12 play starts? Um, just being more consistent. I think Pac-12 plays the highest level of soccer in America right now, so it's going to be um, challenging. We're going to get really tested um, in these upcoming games, but as long as we stay consistent, keep playing the way we need to play, and uh, 
working together as a unit, we'll be we'll be good. All right, JJ, the reigning Pac-12 goaltender of the week in the uh, league after that 2-1 victory over DU. In fact, we were there on Sunday at Prentiff Field. Here's a couple of scenes from behind the scenes against the Pioneers. about this because we've been in this position with two nothing. You can't you, you, they've had more chances than the last few teams, okay? We have to continue to put the pressure on, play at tempo and find the next goal. Put them under some pressure. Put them under some pressure, okay? Keep running down. It was exciting, a 2-1 to one win. Buffs jumped out 2 nothing. in fact, over the Piles before the Piles got a goal, not against a JJ, by the way. <laughs> a pretty competitive game, and they were putting some pressure on you early in that contest, weren't they? Oh, yeah. It's always a big game when we play to you because they're our in-state rivals, and uh, they always bring the energy. They're a good team, and so uh, we just have to match the intensity, and I thought we had a really good crowd this weekend, which was really exciting, really fun to play behind, but they definitely tested us early. I think getting those two goals in the first half really helped us, and then uh, in the second half really just... You have to make the push. When you're playing a rival, you have to gut it out, and I think mm -hmm. we did that. You know, one thing we've been talking about, I think, consistently here on the show was mental health student-athletes. It's going to become a huge point of emphasis with Rick Jordan, the athletic department. You and Kennedy Leonard started an organization called Boulder Buffs, and it focuses on that. Tell us about it. Yeah, so uh, Kennedy Leonard and I came up with this idea to create a student-run organization called Boulder Buffs to advocate, uh, educate, and just help the student-athletes and the community of Boulder understand mm -hmm. mental health because it's such a prominent topic right now. It's something we everybody deals with and that uh, we need to give more attention to. So. We want to be a resource for our community and for the athletic department, so it's pretty fun. It's, it's, I think the idea behind this is, is to take the stigma away from a young man or woman who I mean, is struggling and maybe afraid to come out and admit that. Yeah. And, and you want to kind of take that stigma away, don't you? Yeah, it's okay to not be okay, and I think that's where we need the next thing we need to move to in our, in our culture. And I think uh, CU, we're allowed to do that, and Rick George allows us the opportunity to have a voice here in the Athletic Center to do that. All right, well, good job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, good luck in Pac-12 conference Thank play. You. All right, Jenna Tompkins with the CU soccer team as the Buffaloes open up Pac-12 play on Friday at Oregon State. Thanks for joining us this week on the Buffalo Stampede.